why did all these chapters in Acts get suddenly very short? We're going to listen to Acts 24, but we're not going to find out why. All right, so now we saw that Paul tried to talk to people, told him the whole story. Their ears were not ready to hear it. They were still really angry. And the Romans had to whisk Paul away twice to save his life. And they were curious, what exactly did you do that made people so mad? So after five days, Ananias came with some of the elders and a spokesperson, Tertullus, and they laid out the case. It said that they explained what was wrong with Paul. (laughs) And Tertullus began accusing him, saying that, you know, we have all this peace. We know you, Felix, who is going to be the person, the judge listening to all of this. And you reformed the nation in all these ways. And we're so grateful for all of it. And we don't want to detain you any further. Hear us here in this whole situation. This man is a plague who stirs up riots among the Jews throughout the whole world and is the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, meaning the people of Jesus. He even tried to profane the temple, but we seized him before he could do that. I mean, this is not true, right? I don't know how you can prove someone is or is not a plague. He didn't stir up riots. I mean, it's kind of one of those funny things that if I say something and you beat me up and then you say, well, see, she's stirring up riots. It's not exactly true. And he's not the ringleader of the Nazarenes. He did not try to profane the temple. So all these things are not true. And they're just trying to trump up charges basically against him. But Tertullus was someone who, a spokesperson, meaning that he was someone probably who knew a Roman law. He knew the right procedures in how you talk to dignitaries, which they say is flattery. Most excellent Felix. We don't know what he did. We don't know what he reformed or even if we reformed at all. But, you know, he was trying to be very nice to it. All we know is that Felix was recalled to Rome about two years after this because of poor performance. And you also notice that Tertullus is using the word we. He's representing what the Jews are saying, trying to talk in Roman law. And so if you just look at him, you know, yourself, you'll figure out all these things that we're saying about him. Totally true. And the Jews also join then in charging and saying, yeah, 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 he, that's what he did. And so when the governor had nodded t- to Paul to speak, Paul got up and saying that, you know, you've been the judge over this nation for a while. And so I'm going to cheerfully, I like that make my defense. You can verify that it's not been more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. They didn't find anything wrong with me. I didn't stir anybody up, either in the temple, the synagogue, the city. They can't prove any of these things that they're saying. Now, according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of all the fathers, the God they believed, our father, our joint father. I I worship that too. I believe everything that was laid out in the law and in the prophets. And I'm just, and having hope that these men themselves accept that there will be a resurrection. Now, this is going to split people up. We learned, you know, during the Gospels that the Sanhedrin was primarily made up of the Samaritans. And the Samaritans only believed in the law of Moses. They didn't believe in the prophets. But we have seen situations where information was said in the Law of Moses, just like it was in the Law of Prophets. It was just said more often, and there were more descriptions in the prophets talking about the resurrections, but the Samaritans didn't believe in the resurrections while the Pharisees did. And Paul was a Pharisee. So he's saying, "I, I don't believe, I'm not in disagreement with these Jews that are here. I believe in the Law and the Prophets just like they do, even though half of them don't. But this was kind of splitting them because There was this kind of uncomfortable alliance between them. So he's just saying that God raised Jesus from the dead. We should have hope in that same resurrection. And the Pharisees all would have agreed with him too, except the part about the Jesus part. But they would have believed in the resurrection. So he got agreement from half the people that were there, reminding him that there was a resurrection and God would bring us back from the dead. So he took this message and applied it. I like this quote, take pains to have a clear conscience towards both God and man. Judaism was a sanctioned religion. So it's not that the Romans believed it, but people were allowed to be Jewish. And he's saying, look, I believe the same things 
that half the Jewish people, <laughs> the Pharisees, believe in. So I'm the same person. And when they found me in the temple, I was purifying without any crowd. I didn't cause a commotion. And there were some Jews from Turkey who were making accusations against me. But let these men themselves say what wrongdoing I did. And then at the end, he finished it up and he says, quote, it is with respect for the resurrection of the dead that I'm on trial here. Half these people, they don't believe it. But you know what? The other half people do. And they're just putting on me a trial because I believe in the resurrection. And, you know, this is not going to be a crime in Rome. Like I said, being Jewish, not a crime in Rome. It was a sanctioned religion. Felix had a rather accurate knowledge of the way. And he says that when Lysias, the commander, comes, I'll decide your case. He ordered the centurions to keep Paul under guard because they're going to kill him if they don't, but give him some freedom. Let his friends come and bring him things that he needs. It means he had some sort of understanding among some of the differences between the way these new Christians and Judaism. But I don't think he believed that being part of the way was a crime against Judaism or any Roman law. So the suggestion is, is that his third wife, Drusilla, was Jewish and that with her help, he probably understood. She probably told him what the difference is between Judaism and Christianity. So he maybe knew a little bit more because he was married to a Jewish woman. He sent for Paul and heard him speak about the faith of Jesus Christ. And he reasoned about the righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment. And it says that Felix was alarmed and said, go away from the presence. When I get the opportunity, I'll summon you. All at the same time, he hoped in the meantime that money was going to be sent to Paul. So he brought him in to talk with Paul often. Two years went by and Felix then was succeeded by a fellow named Horcus Festus. And it says that he wanted to do the Jews a favor, so he left him in prison. The idea was is that he was hoping that Paul's friends were going to come in with money and bribe him, bribe him to let him go, to let Paul go. It, it was kind of like, Paul, I'd like to talk to you again. Let me, you know, and hoping that at some point a bribery offer would happen. And it just never did. In that period of time, two years went by and he had, again, some freedoms. He was allowed to see his friends and his friends were allowed to bring him things that he needed. He got a chance to listen to God's word, the gospel, but really he wanted a bribe. <laughs> so he left him in prison. And at that point, Felix was recalled. And that would have been in 59 AD. And so the general belief is that he didn't repent or he didn't really learn anything from Paul and Paul's preaching, even though he heard it quite a bit. So Festus became the procurator in 60 AD, but then he died in 62 AD. But that was another two years to give more opportunity to deal with Paul and hear from Paul. And that ends Acts 24. What I'm going to meditate on is how you come across these times of tribulation. You know, Paul's going to be now kind of put in house prison, I guess. At least he could talk to his friends and it wasn't so bad as it was. But it gave him opportunity to speak the word of God, not just to Felix and Drusilla, maybe, but also the guards, the people that were around him. Paul takes these opportunities. Instead of feeling pity for himself, instead of missing these opportunities, Paul is going up in rank to who he gets to talk to because of his imprisonment, and he is going to take every advantage of it. What I'm going to pray about is that I also look for times of great sadness or injustice in my own life and see them as opportunities to say the word of God and that I would be bold enough in these times to stop thinking about myself and start thinking about, I have an opportunity here. And what I'm going to tell others is that idea that there are times that we will look at our lives as cursed, as bad, as something bad is happening to us, but instead, they are opportunities given to us by God, and we can take advantage of them and spread the word of God further. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can find out about all my other podcasts at abetterlifeinsmallsteps.com. My friend writes a blog there might be interested in that as well. Thanks so much for listening.